Weddings can be very stressful, but great at the same time. In addition to the commitment that the couples are going to make, they go through a lot, especially when it comes to deciding what traditions to follow. And in this episode, I'll be highlighting 10 of the most surprising Jewish wedding traditions. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode. My name is Leroy Kenton and stay with me until the end uh, because uh, I think a lot of these uh, traditions, some of them may not be as surprising to you as others, but either way, let's jump into this one. It's always great looking at uh, Jewish culture and seeing how they do things. For number 10, let's look at it being a holy day. Almost every bride, of course, feels like a princess on her wedding day, and especially walking down the aisle, right? And Jewish weddings, though, it's considered to be a very sacred event and a Yom Kippur for the bride and the groom. It means that the day is like the Day of Atonement and the Day of Forgiveness, okay? Also, previous sins of the bride and groom are forgiven, and they take vows that connect their soul. So yeah, that's an interesting thing to incorporate in the wedding tradition. Next up at number nine, we have the Shabbat Kala. It's an event in which those close to the bride, like her friends and her family and people from the community, they throw an event for the bride. Now, this is an all girls party, so no guys are allowed there. Sort of like a bachelorette party. Now, the event of the Shabbat Kala is held on the Saturday before the wedding but the Shabbat Kala is more than just an excuse for Jewish girls to go and party. It's a purposeful event where all the close people are there for the bride to make sure that she feels love and to ease her nerves before her big wedding day. For the tradition at number eight, let's look at Yom Kippur. Now I mentioned a bit of this earlier, but I wanna to add to this point. Some Jews actually fast on their wedding day. Now, why do they do this? Well, like I mentioned, the wedding is considered a day of forgiveness. And as such, some couples choose to fast the day of their wedding, just as they do on Yom Kippur, the day of atonement. The couple's fast will last until the first meal together after the wedding ceremony. The tradition of chupa comes in at number seven. Jewish weddings are held under special canopies called chupa. Now they're held up by four poles and have a roof and it is the first roof that is shared by the couple. Its structure reflects and pays tribute to the open tent that the biblical figures Abraham and Sarah shared. Their home was never closed to the community and they greeted all of their guests openly and hospitably. The wedding ceremony of Jews begins when the groom enters a chupa. Now in most weddings, the bride circles seven times around her husband before joining him, which represents that she is making walls for their future life. At number six, let's look at the tradition of badiken. Normally we have seen that the groom unveils his bride, but the opposite happens in many Jewish weddings. The groom veils his bride actually, and this veiling takes place in the badiken ceremony and it's an important part of the wedding. The bride tried her best to look beautiful and stunning on her big day. So why veil the face? Well, let me explain. The veil is worn because no matter how beautiful the bride appears, beauty is fleeting. And it's the quality of a person's character and spirit that truly matters. The veil represents that now the groom is ready to protect clothe and provide for his wife. Now, halfway in at number five, we have the tradition of plain rings. The bride receives a ring from the groom and it's not necessary that the item has to be a ring though, but normally it is a ring for tradition's sake. The ring must be plain though, made of gold and without any sort of ornaments or extra fixings on it, none of that stuff. The simplicity of the ring symbolizes that the wedding is also uncomplicated and simple. The groom does not always receive a ring at this point though, but the bride has to give him a ring and she must wait until they have left the chupa to do so. All the events must be carried out according to the teachings of the Torah. So Jews, they try to keep that at the forefront when they're practicing and doing their wedding traditions. Number four leads us to a tradition known as Tinaim. 
Now, it's a document that has to be signed to declare the official engagement of the bride and the groom. So even if the man proposes to his woman and he puts a ring on her finger, well, doesn't mean they're engaged. They're not officially engaged at all. They have to sign the Tina Im. Now, next up, the Ketuba is another contract that is signed and the groom signs this contract to make sure that from now on, he'll be responsible to fulfill the emotional as well as the physical needs of his wife. He'll be responsible to provide food and shelter to his wife and to make sure that the wife is fulfilling his vows, the wives do have access to this contract. And it is a necessary part of the Jewish wedding because the wedding cannot take place until it is signed. People usually handwrite and decorate these contracts. Number two brings us a very interesting tradition though, stepping on glass. At the end of the ceremony, the groom is invited to go and step on some glass. With his shoes on, of course. Imagine barefoot stepping on glass. No. Nah. So not only is this a fun way to end the wedding ceremony, but it also is extremely symbolic in Jewish weddings. It recalls the destruction of the Jerusalem temple and reminds the newlyweds and all of their guests of this event, even at their happiest hour. To end this episode off at number one, we have the tradition of Yitshud. After the ceremony, the couple is taken to a private room called Yitshud for some quiet time. Yitshud means alone together and no one is allowed to disturb the couple at this point. The couple is allowed to break their fast in Yitshud and have some alone time after the hectic day. Now, I do have to say though that there is a big misconception that the couple consummates their wedding marriage through sexual intimacy in the Yitshud. Well, of course, you know, it happens, right? After all, we're talking about newlyweds here, but it's not necessarily happening during that time. The couple may choose to do it after, but in biblical times, the Yitshud was when the marriage would be consummated. All right, we made it to the end of another episode. Did you guys find any of these traditions surprising? And if so, which ones did you find the most surprising? Let me know your thoughts and comments down below. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave a big thumbs up. And also, if this is your first time here to the channel, subscribe and make sure to ring that bell so you're notified when we post new videos. We post daily episodes like this. So join the FTD Facts family and uh, see you guys real soon.